Welcome to another episode of That Tech Guy. Formerly the Convenient Vegan. Formerly, formerly known as, formerly known as. Many, many moons ago. The Convenient Vegan. Don't go try looking it up. It doesn't exist anymore, for good reason too. On another note, we're going to do a tech video for you guys. For everyone out there that is running Windows, because pretty much the whole world runs on Windows, but you want to be able to have a Linux distribution on your computer without having to have go through the hassle of dual booting or just simply wiping Windows off. We're actually going to run VirtualBox and show you guys how to do this. So we're going to head on into Google because most people use Google. They're not Windows fanboys like I am. <laughs> we're going to first we're going to go and actually we're going to download VirtualBox. You can so. use your choice of either VirtualBox or VMware Player. Um, both are excellent tools, and I highly recommend that you try both of them out. Um, VMware Player more so if you want to do more graphic-intensive um, applications, simply because it can grab your graphics card directly, whereas VirtualBox, there's an extra layer there, and so it won't use your dedicated graphics quite as well. Um, so if, you wanna, if you're trying to do some gaming through this, I highly recommend um, VMware Player. <laughs> if there's a, a game that doesn't work on Windows. As Brandon here said, today's topic, how to run Linux, uh, specifically Ubuntu, on top of a Windows 10 host. To get started, the first thing we're going to grab, if you don't have it already, is we are going to use VirtualBox for this tutorial. And you can grab that by simply going to Google or your favorite search engine, typing in VirtualBox. <laughs> no. uh, I hate Bing. And it will be the first one that comes up at the very top. The Downloads Oracle VM Virtual Box. And from here, we want to grab... We're not going to do this. We're not doing Linux like normal. Um, we're doing I know for Windows me, one. that's like natural instinct. That's the first one I jump for. <laughs> um, but we're going to grab the first one, the 5.0.22 for Windows host. Let's go ahead and get this guy. And it's for both 64- um, or 32-bit processors. So whichever one you have, this one will work right out of the box. And now I will mention that I'm using Firefox here. It's a little different than if you were in Chrome or Edge. They just it manages downloads differently. So if it looks different to you, this is that's kind of why. Everything else, just go ahead and when you click on it, it should hit Run or Save. Just go ahead and save the file, and then it should open it up for you to be able to run it afterwards. Right. We want to make sure we save the program to our desktop because running it directly will be of no use to us. It looks yeah. like we got two minutes left, so it's moving right along. And as you can see, it has finished downloading, so we're going to go ahead and open it up. If you're using something other than Firefox, it probably has opened up a prompt for you to go ahead and click Download or Run Program. If not, navigate to your Downloads folder. And it's a pretty straightforward install. Basically, just click Next to everything. Um, it's quick. On this page, we want to make sure we register file associations. The other two are not quite as necessary. They're more personal preference. And then click Next, and that's pretty much it. Let it run through, and we will be good to go. Of course, you want it to allow changes. You want to allow changes for this because we're doing it. It's not randomly happening. And if you get a prompt like this asking if you want to install the device software for Oracle, go ahead and do that. Um, otherwise, it won't work quite properly. Everyone, this is actually a new microphone that we have that we're using. So if you like the sound quality or if you can notice that there's a difference, go ahead and let us know. And if you think it sucks and sounds the same or worse, let us know about that too. Well, if you think it sucks, let it know on Brandon V's channel. <laughs> yeah. I don't really want to hear any of it. <laughs> Go ahead and check it out. It's Brandon V, Brandon with an E. And I, it's my journey of discovery. Go ahead and check it out. And e for Ebola. <laughs> what? Oh, now that we got that plug in there. <laughs> As you can see on this computer, um, the timestamp says 1047. 
but this computer was just brought in from Central Time. We're in Eastern Time right now, so it's actually 11.47. Yes. And we've had a long weekend, and I'm just ready for bed. I haven't been sleeping much lately. There's just so much to do. All right, once the installation finishes, we are ready to fire up VirtualBox. And we're going to leave Start Oracle VirtualBox after. Selection, installation, so... There we go. Go ahead and close this. Yeah, we can minimize everything else, remove some of that clutter. Okay. All right, once VirtualBox has started up, we are ready to create our system, our guest operating system. So simply click New and type in a name for your guest operating system. Now you could name it uh, be Classic and you could name it Ubuntu if you wish. But I like to name my systems random average male names. I'm not sure why, but I always have. So we're going to name this one Smitty2. And make sure your type is Linux, because again, we will be running Ubuntu 16.4, the Mate version. And so we already downloaded the 64-bit, because our, this processor in this computer is a 64-bit processor. And you can figure out your processor type by doing a quick Google search, but you're probably safe if you're on a newer machine picking a 64-bit ISO. So once you do that, click Next. And here, we're going to allocate how much memory we want to give to our system. Now, as you can see, we have 8 gigabytes on this particular host system. Because Linux is less resource intensive than Windows, we don't actually have to give it quite as much than if we were running Windows as the guest. I would say safely we could probably stick with two gigabytes or maybe even one in some cases. However, keep in mind this varies a lot depending on what you're planning to do Correct. with the virtual machine. If you just want to be like us, run a few code, uh, a few terminals, do a little bit of coding, um, maybe look at a couple documents, then you don't need as much. If you're Correct. if you're doing more developer right. work, or if you're going to treat this like a normal everyday operating system, right. then by all means give it more. However, keep this in mind: Windows is extremely resource intensive compared to Linux. Mm -hmm. And another thing yep. is, we highly recommend that you never give it more than half of whatever memory you have installed. Correct. So if you have eight gigabytes installed, don't go over four. Even though this will technically allow you to. It will, but you risk crashing your system. And we, we don't want to choke our host system. We don't want to choke Windows. No. So once you do that, click Next. And here we're going to choose what kind of hard drive we want to add to our system. We've got three options. We can not add one. We can create a virtual hard disk, or we can use an existing one. Now, an existing virtual hard drive works really well. It's fairly simple to set up. Mm -hmm. It just takes a bit more time. There are quite a few more steps. It's not hard, but it is a little bit outside the scope of what we're trying to do here because we want to keep this simple, as simple as we can. So we're going to stick with the default option of creating a virtual hard disk. And we'll just go ahead and click Create. And again, it, you're going to be presented with a lot of choices of what kind of hard drive, hard disk you want to make. I find that for no matter what I'm using it for, the first option, the VirtualBox disk image, works quite well. So we'll stick with that. Also, we'll go ahead and dynamically allocate it. That way, the file will grow up to a certain point that we have limited it to but it will not take up extra space that it doesn't need until it needs it. And on this screen we are and on this screen we can choose how big we want our hard drive to be. Right. Because we're running Linux and we're not planning to do more than maybe a few terminal commands. I would safely say between 8 to 10 gigabytes we can we can fit this on. So right, we're going to go ahead and set this one at 10 gig around 10 gigabytes. I have it set at 1029, but that's not an exact number. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and click, click create. And just another side note, always keep in mind, always be thinking, you know, what am I planning to use this guest operating system for? Right. Because again, if you're planning to use a lot of software, pictures, movies, music, whatever, you're going to need more storage right. um, as you go along. So always remember 
what your plans are for the system. So after we do that, we're going to go ahead and open up the settings tab and we're going to make in the general, make sure that everything here is correct. Looks good. So we'll drop on down to system, make sure our memory looks fine. Click on the processor tab in the center towards the top. And this is where we can allocate how many processors we want to assign to this particular guest system. Now this CPU does have eight, this, this processor does have eight CPUs. Um, with those, we could technically give it several, a lot of CPUs. It doesn't recommend, as you can see, it's red, it has a red bar on the tab here, that it doesn't recommend going over four. And the we agree with that as well. Theoretically, you can slide that all the way, I believe, and give it all your CPUs. Yeah, you can. But remember, if you do that, then your host operating system, in this case Windows, will have nothing to run off of. And you're probably going to crash the whole thing. Now, this CPU is currently running. It's not overclocked at all, and it's currently running at 3.1 gigahertz. So a dual-core system at 3.1 gigahertz with 2 gigs of RAM is a, a fairly average lower-level system. But that is, all that, again, with in mind what we're thinking to actually do with this system, that is perfect for us. We don't Perfectly need something more. Right. right. We're going to go ahead and stick with two CPUs for this system. And after that, go ahead and go down to display. Mm -hmm. And I recommend dragging your video memory all the way to the right. Give it as much of that as you can. And go ahead and enable 3D and 2D video acceleration for a smoother graphical experience. Next, click on storage. And from here, we are going to add our Ubuntu ISO. So on the little disk under the controller IDE, where it says empty, we click on that and then click on the disk on the right next to the IDE right. yeah. secondary and click choose virtual optical disk file. And this is where we'll navigate to wherever we downloaded or store our ISO. And we stored it here. And we'll go ahead and click on our Ubuntu 16.4 desktop. It is a Mate version, but that it does, no matter which version you use. No matter what version of Ubuntu, where it's GNOME or Unity or any of the other ones, the steps to install this are, are exactly the same. All right. And lastly, before we fire this up, if you want to share folders between the host and the guest operating system. It's quite easy to do that. You right click within the shared folders tab, click add shared folder. And from here, from there, you can easily navigate to the folder you want to share and even make it read only and auto mount when you fire up the machine. So it's quite easy to set those up as well for sharing documents, pictures and whatever else you wish. Right, with between the two systems. Mm -hmm. Once that's done, we're ready to fire this up. So hit OK. Our settings are good to go. We can double start. Check. Mm, yep. You can double check on the right. It lists everything for your PC. And I think everything's good. So let's let's run this. Let's once, do it. Once the second window opens, we can actually close the back VirtualBox manager and all the other tabs for a little less clutter. <laughs> a little less clutter. <laughs> well, I always prefer a clean desktop. I do too, but I have been currently, I, I have not cleaned this off in a while. Usually I keep everything in a single folder that says all. Actually, I have named it downloads right here. And actually, as you can see, we're getting a couple of these messages about auto capturing our mouse and our pointer and also the keyboard. If we click on this icon right here and on this icon right here, we will never see those messages again. And look at that, Ubuntu Mate, one running, of my favorite distributions, might I add. Running quite smoothly on Windows 10. With only two gigabytes of RAM as well as only two cores. Now, as you can see, when we try to maximize this window, it's not full screening. In order to do a, a flexible window size to make however big you want, we're going to have to download the VirtualBox Guest Editions package and install that as well for the full features. We have a, actually have a video on how to install Ubuntu Mate or another type of Ubuntu. So we're not gonna do that in this 
video because we've already covered it. We've got a link here for you to click if you are interested in watching that video. But the installation process from here on out is extremely straightforward. Just right. click the install Ubuntu Mate or install Ubuntu, whichever version you're using. And follow the prompts. Follow the prompts. Mm -hmm. You've already assigned a virtual hard disk. You already have the space and memory allocated. Correct. So you are good to go. You can download all your updates and it will be, It'll be the same. all set for you. So we just went ahead and clicked try just so we can kind of show you guys the, the system running. How it works. Maybe play around with a couple terminal commands and how it integrates with the rest of our host windows. So here we have our welcome screen. It's very default with Mate. Mate -like, yes. It's very pretty. I love the backgrounds that it comes with. And as you can see, even though we only gave it two CPUs, it's moving pretty well. Again, Linux is very, very light on systems resources compared to Windows. And as you can see, our mouse will easily switch between the two operating systems quite seamlessly. Right. So we can click here, we can click here, and we can click here. And it should capture our keyboard as well. Whenever the right mouse there. is inside. Right. You open up the terminal. And if we come down here and click on this, we can open up a command prompt window just right. for the heck of it. And again, I'm pressing my Windows key, and it's opening here in Windows. And if I come here, it's also working because I can type right here. And as you can also see, it is sharing our internet connection with our Windows system so there's it's no sharing like a wired connection it's treating it as an Ethernet so there's no extra configuration with that it automatically handles it by itself so we can actually run updates if we wanted if we installed the system we could download packages mm -hmm. run updates and whatever it's basically a full computer there's really no limit aside from what your hardware originally has right so it's pretty cool. It's a lot of. It's definitely a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Now we've got a, um, another Ubuntu system here on this uh, this computer, this desktop that we can use for whatever we need um, Ubuntu to do. And this is actually a fantastic way to try firsthand a Linux distribution. Right. See if you like it because if you mess this, there's hardly no commitment to this. Right. And if you screw this up, if you download something wrong, or if you completely break it. It's as simple as shutting the machine down and making a new one. It's right. as easy as that. Come Instead here. of actually ruining a, a computer. Right. You can click power off and that's it. It's yeah. gone. So from here we can reopen VirtualBox. And if we had completely screwed up the system, we could easily remove it and start over again with as if it was a whole new computer yep. or with a new Linux ISO whatever we would choose right. and if you wanted to and if you had several different Linux ISOs you could have them all as separate machines here you create a whole list of them right and you could open them up different ones at a time and, and if you have enough processing power and memory you can actually open more than one I think that'll be the end of our video. I so, want to thank everyone for watching. Go ahead and yeah, thank subscribe you. to that tech guy. And if you haven't done so already, check out our website at www.thattechguy.net. Not .com. No, please don't go to .com. That's a virus website. We have articles. We have YouTube videos. We have helpful tech tips and cheat sheets. We cover Windows, Linux, just about everything. Everything from gaming to PowerShell. Yeah. And within a couple of days, we're hoping to have a couple more of our terminal videos. And we also want to do something with our new Raspberry Pi that we just got. Mm. So stay tuned for that. And if you have an idea for a video or an article, something you would like to know more about, please be sure to comment or write to us. Leave a well-crafted comment in the comment section. Let us know if you tried out installing VirtualBox and running a Linux ISO. On let us Windows know machine. how that went. If you had any difficulties, let us know, and we will try to work with you through that. And again, I want to thank my friend here, Brandon. If you haven't done so already, check out his channel. It's more of a vlog channel. Yeah, a day in the life kind of thing. Um, good for some laughs, mostly. <laughs> some laughs. <laughs> if you want to watch my crazy life, it's not a normal vlog channel. It's more of a a memory bank for me when I'm old and can't remember life anymore. So we got a link for that below as well, so be sure to check that out. And again, thank you for watching. Have a great day. This is That Tech Guy, signing off.